you're in your head all day struggling about I'm a failure. I'm bad. I'm because I'm overweight. And honestly, there's there are answers out there. I mean, for everybody. And it may not have anything to do with your willpower. It may not have anything to do with you not being active. you got to find what's right for you and what works for you. If you've been watching, you know that I take my ingredients very seriously. But there are three companies that I have found that I absolutely love. Check the description for discount codes. Hello, welcome to my show. My name is Adrienne. This is a series where I interview different Biggest Loser alumni. And we're going to talk about what happened and where are we today and any lessons we've learned. So today I have with me my friend Amy. She's from season six and she's going to tell us all about it. So welcome, Amy. Hi, Adrian. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. These are my favorite interviews, but it is actually kind of hard to find Biggest Losers that will come out and talk these days. So I'm excited to share, to give a little background to you and to my audience. If you don't know, I was on season three of The Biggest Loser immediately after the show. I gained a hundred pounds. I did everything, the restricting and the running, and it just didn't work anymore. And I wasn't feeling good. The energy was gone, all the things. And so then I ended up having gastric bypass and then that made me sick. And I've ended up kind of on a more meat-based diet. I eat a carnivore diet to maintain my lower weight. But I know other people in this space have they've found other ways. Some people, the gastric bypass worked. Some people are trying GLP ones. Some people just restricting has continued to work for them. So we're going to talk about where Amy is and what's worked for her. So first, Amy, could you tell us a little bit of a background of your life and how you got to a place where you would want to be on a TV show for weight loss? Um, yeah, I was a huge fan of the show. My ex-husband, Philip, who was on the show with me, he was not as much of a fan. So I kind of drug him to a casting call in Atlanta and told him that that's what we were going to do. And he was like, okay. And um, a little bit more background. I have, we have three boys and our youngest son is autistic. And so when he was diagnosed, it threw me, I mean, I've never been like, but my whole life, I was never like skinny, skinny, but I was, you know, pretty healthy weight. Well, when he got diagnosed, it just threw me into a tailspin. And the only way I would comfort myself was with food. And like, I remember eating like just a whole thing of ice cream and Doritos while I'm watching TV, crying and watching The Biggest Loser. And um, so that was kind of the thing that, and before I knew it, you know, I'm like, you know, 240 pounds and not able to, you know, keep up with my kids and no energy. And I'm like, you know, I got to do something. But we both sold real estate. And so you're on this hamster wheel all the time with work because you have to sell something to make any income. So I was like, how could we possibly ever be on the show and change our lives? But Philip's sister, Joan, stepped up and said she would watch the kids. We had a couple of agents in our office that said, listen, we'll take over your listings. You get all the commission. We want to see you healthy. And so that's how we were able to do it. And, you know, we're from little old South Carolina, you know, it's grown since then, but we're from a small town in South Carolina, the Bible Belt, raised in very uh, strict Christian homes. So going in, we were even in the ministry at one time. So going into this environment, I was so naive. I mean, I like was there to lose weight. And also, um, and this is something that nobody knows up to this point. I'm scooping it with you, Adrian. I had fi- found out the like a few weeks before we got selected, knew we were selected that we had, and this this is one thing that kind of led to our divorce, that we had a tax bill that or we had not filed taxes and I did not know about it. And we were going to have to pay the IRS like a lot of money. And I was like, well, not only do I need to lose weight, but I've got to win this money. <laughs> so that was a fuel to my competitive, you know, to, to wanting to win. And um, anyway, but we went on the show and there was a lot of gameplay and stuff that I didn't understand or know how to actually do. But um, anyway, it was a good experience. I, I feel like overall, I'm very grateful for it. Is there anything when you get to the ranch and you'd, you'd seen all the seasons, you were a super fan. Was there anything that was kind of shocking to you about how things actually worked? Well, I feel like, and I just wanted to be nice. I'm just like the kind of person I want to be nice to everybody. I want to be everybody's friend. You know, that's just my personality. 
And I feel like there were other people in there that were very strategic and they had already kind of and somehow formed an alliance, like as soon as they got on the ranch. And so I feel like that was a little bit against me. And then the first week that I, you know, went, didn't lose weight, there was their opportunity. And I was, you know, I was, I actually left before Philip did and they had put him there was a lot of strategy, but they had put him on another team through one of the contests and he was the only guy on the team. And actually, and this is another scoop, Jillian convinced him to drink water prior to the weigh in so that he would get kicked off because she told him they were going to bring us back and that we would get to compete on the show again together, which was not true. And I was so angry when he came home and told me that. I was just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I could have won the at-home prize. You could have won the prize on the ranch. And actually, at the end of the show, um, they they made it where America would vote one of the finalists into my category. Had they not voted Heba, because they didn't, they you know, America was mad at her at the time. Had they not voted Heba into my category, I would have won the 250000 dollars because I was the second well I guess let's see I was the yeah second highest percentage of weight loss Heba was actually the first she would have won the whole thing but Michelle won it and and I love Michelle I mean I I, I really like all the people in the show it's just the circumstances and the person I was at the time I'm a totally much more mature person I guess than I was then, so I feel the same way. My my current husband has never seen the show uh, because I cry like the whole time and I scream things like, that's fair. life's not right. fair, 22 right. year old Adrian. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I was 40 when I went on the show. So you would think I would have been a little bit. It's just the way I was raised and everything. My, my husband will not watch the show at all. He's like, that's your past life before BP, before Paul. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I think we all learn lessons. And then what people don't realize too is what a pressure cooker it is. I mean, you know that millions of people are going to watch this and that's a lot of pressure, especially as people who have struggled with weight our whole life. And it's, it's kind of easy to hide when you're overweight and then to come out in the limelight. Yes. It's crazy on the way. When you're on there, it's like, you can never be a hundred percent happy because you like you have a victory, but then also you have to send somebody home that you like, and you have to be thinking about strategy and then you got to get back in there and do it again. And you don't know who your friends are. And, you know, you rely so heavily on your trainers, but then like later on, you realize that maybe they're not a hundred percent with your best interest all the time because they're listening to the producers and they're playing a game. And it, it's, it's just a lot, you know, to deal with and very stressful. And even when you come home, very stressful. I mean, I had people following me around in the grocery store to see what I was buying in my shopping cart. And I had people show up at my front door to knock on the door to, you know, take a picture with me. And I'm like, how do you know where I live? So, Yeah. And then, then there's the added layer of anybody who loses weight, our body stores all our toxins in our fat to protect us. And there's a lot of hormone in our fat too. So this is extinguishing incredibly fast. We're not allowed to talk to our family. We don't have phones. We're sequestered. You're stuck. There's cameras following you and (laughs) it's crazy. Yes. Great TV. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, when you were on the show, like our season, I was pretty early on. And so I think there were some things that were ironed out later. But for our season, because of production, because of filming schedules, because of when cameras were available, camera crews, and when sites were available, our each week was quite a bit longer than a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that kind of gives a little bit of a different impression to America. Like, you can lose 30 pounds a week oh god yeah. it was um, crazy. How was yeah. it for you was it pretty close to a week or was it a little bit longer do you remember i think the shortest week was probably 10 days mm-hmm. um and then it was but it was a lot of times two weeks you know that you were that you were there and then you know all the now i don't know if they did this during your season but we all of a sudden had all these endorsements and so we had to act like we were out running and then we had to get a glass of milk or we had to eat the extra gum or we had to drink eat the jello pudding and then Bob would go don't eat that crap I mean it was just like it was it was just such an eye-opening I can't watch tv anymore without 
understanding production. And product placement. Yeah. Yeah. Product placement. Yeah. Did like the weigh ins? I I swear I remember our weigh in. I had to walk up several times, even on the one where I was being voted out. And they didn't make me do it too many times because they knew they weren't going to get much more authenticity out of me because I was bawling like a baby. But you know, like the weigh ins, I don't know if it was for you, but for us, I swear the weigh ins took like six hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you're standing on this piece of metal that weighs absolutely nothing. I mean, that is not actually the fake scale because you yeah. got this in the morning. You get up and go to the bathroom and go in there and weigh in like completely naked because you want every single yes. to not show on that scale in front of producers and everybody. But um, yes. yeah, so yeah, it did take a long time. And I remember one time I had gotten sunburned, but I guess it was just like a strip of sun like on my stomach where the bathing suit I had on was just had like a little circle or something so the all of America sees this little and we asked makeup hey could we get some makeup for this because we didn't notice and of course they wouldn't we couldn't have makeup or anything you know so I just had to go on tv and I was like so self-conscious about having this burn mark on my stomach you know that's hanging out my big stomach so yeah just all kinds of different things behind the scenes that people don't see. It was interesting too, because we were losing weight and we didn't get new clothes. Did you? No, guys? no. You no, had to continue to wear shirts. those big baggy clothes. We did get new shirts after, if you made it, you know, a certain time, amount of time. To a we certain week? Get, yeah, to a certain week. We did get some new shirts, but I mean, they were worn out and nasty by the time we got the new ones and the new uh, pants, you know. The what are the little shorts that they gave us? Yeah, I wore through several pairs of shoes because yes. I was hiking yeah. so much. So tell us a little bit about what the diet and the exercise was like, because that's what people want to know. They want to know, was there any magic or what exactly did you do to lose all that weight? I'm telling you, people say, oh, you must have had chefs preparing your food and you must have had all this. And I'm like, no, Julie went out and bought whatever food we wanted, you know, that we would tell. And of course, they didn't buy like. Winkies or something like that, but they bought like seafood or, or, you know, steak or whatever kind of food we wanted. Um, I remember there was some kind of salsa that I really liked with those blue corn chips and she would get that. And um, we would get a notebook and they gave us the biggest loser calorie counter guide. And Bob said to stay at 800 calories a day. And so we would, but we had to eat every three hours. They were like, you got to keep your metabolism going. So eat every three hours, but only eat 800 calories. So you get up and I would, I had a routine. I would eat two egg whites, a piece of turkey bacon and a piece of Ezekiel bread for breakfast. Then three hours later, I'd eat a Fage yogurt with some xylitol and maybe a couple berries in there. And then I'd have like a salad for lunch. And then maybe some of the, like five of those blue corn chips with salsa and then dinner, we would have some kind of protein and, and vegetable. So, I mean, we were eating healthy foods, you know, but just staying in that 800 calorie range. But the crazy thing is, I mean, 800 calories, if you're not doing anything, that's one thing. But if you're working out eight hours a day, that's crazy. I mean, because we'd get yes. up in the morning and we'd have to meet the trainers at the gym. And if they weren't there, they would bring some of their, the people that trained them and they would train us. And then we would have to, you know, we'd wear our little body bug things, which is, you know, like an Apple watch, but it actually showed the calories you were burning. And we would walk and we would run and we would swim and we would do stuff all day long. And even at night, like if you hadn't got your burn in on your body bug, you had to work out in the gym at night, which people don't know, but that was just a set. It was just a shell. There was no air conditioning. We have porta potties out the back. Um, you walk in there at night and turn the lights on and there'd be a whole gang of raccoons in there. Somebody had left a snack because <laughs> we were on the King Gillette Ranch and it was actually like a wildlife preserve. So there'd be coyote. One time a coyote in the middle of the day tried to come in the gym. Um, we had those ground squirrel things everywhere. Raccoons. I mean, big raccoons. They would stand up. I swear they came to hear me. <laughs> so it was it was something. But yeah, I mean, we just worked out all day and ate 800 calories. And I mean... We lost weight. Did you get any injury? I personally didn't, but um, they, well, actually, 
I did get one injury when we were doing uh, one of the challenges. We went to Pepperdine University and they had um, slip and slides all the way down the hill in different colors for your team. And we were supposed to take a running jump and slide down the hill. And um, I actually cracked my ribs doing that. And I couldn't finish. Like, I couldn't finish the challenge. And I'm, I actually made that show talk suit for Joel McHale because it was so it was so embarrassing. I mean, it was like, you know, because I never, I just, I just couldn't do it after that because I was in so much pain. But that's really the only injury. And that didn't really affect walking on the treadmill or, or lifting weights necessarily. Um, so it wasn't like some of the other people who actually had real serious injuries like Jerry on our um season he was in really bad shape and um actually Vicky we did a challenge where we had to walk from sun up to sundown on that mountain in the back of the ranch and she had a broken foot and did not even realize it because they had not diagnosed it and she was a nurse anesthetist so like she was in the medical field and she knew something was wrong and she walked up and down that hill all day um, with a broken foot and afterwards she made them get her an x-ray and they found out that it was broken but it was like stuff like that you're just like really you know it that was that part was not good I know so I was an at-home contestant who won my way back on the show and at home I had access to a doctor a nutritionist and a psychologist and mm -hmm. I come on the set and I'm not allowed to talk to any of those people anymore and I remember right. I got to the point where I couldn't sleep I physically could not sleep and we had to like relay a message through a doctor and wait and wait and wait and i got a really vague answer back because they really kind of were very hands off yes yes we got to see them when they were filming some, one of those things where you know they were trying to tell us how we we're going to die because we have a fatty liver or whatever <laughs> one of those shocking scenes and that's yeah. when we see them really that's the only time i mean you know, we did have Sa uh, Sandy, our trainer. He was a sports trainer. I think we're. Oh, we had Sandy too, I think. Yeah. yeah did he so come from nice. the football background? Was it football or baseball? Maybe, maybe it was football, but he was so great. And actually yeah. um, in our season, what really, ha what happened was Philip actually pissed Heba off at the Grand Canyon when he, he went off on her for some reason. I was like, what is, I've never seen this side of him. And of course, she wasn't going to have it. So then we became completely polarized with them. And towards the end, when we came back on the ranch, like there was a whole thing with her and him and they were fighting and all this. And I was just so sad and so done. I just wanted to get away from the cameras. I had to go in the bathroom um, to get away from the cameras. And finally, they left me alone. And I just went and got in the bed. And Sandy comes in there and he goes, Amy, it's OK. I'm so sorry. You're they're, you know, you're having to deal with this. And I mean, he was so nice, you know, um, I felt like he was a good one, you know. Yes, there were definitely some advocates there. Like I felt like the production crew really was there. Now they hated my guts because they were already rooting for the people who'd been there the whole time, but they uh, me a little bit and, you know, they, they get you what you need and calm you down and tell you, Hey, you got to get back on camera, even though this stinks right now and you know yeah. so so tell us a little bit about i'm going to show is it okay if i show a before picture um, okay the before picture here's one of the before pictures i have where did you start at do you mind telling us well i was 240 at home and then when we found out we were going to be on the show like a dummy i tried to start working out and tried to diet and then they weighed me you know several weeks from the time you know you're going to be on until you actually go to to be weighed in and i had lost like 20 pounds so dumb i've never heard of anybody doing that i've heard the opposite it was so stupid. I'm like, looking back, I'm like, you idiot. You should have drank water and like, you know, but that it was, was not a good gameplay. That was not no, a I good was like, game. Eat pizza and noodles. I was so naive, but I also was like, I'm not going to be able to work out. I'm not going to be able to keep up. And, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know where my brain was. But anyway, so 220 right there. When okay. They started, all the pictures. Yeah. There's another one. You're ready to fight them well that's when i got kicked off that's where i was well, that's like. when you got kicked off yeah i was yeah. thinking you were looking pretty good here <laughs> and you can see the baggy shirt because they don't give you new shirts yeah, right. but then they like hide the fact because then there's the big reveal a big reveal we can a, see it in yeah. your face <laughs> but the big reveal is to come 
Um, after I'll sh I'll show another one of like your finale, but I'm wondering. So you're on the show. How long did you make it on the show? I think we were maybe weeks. I was there week six to week six, maybe because we went six or seven. But yeah, I know I didn't make the makeover show. I was so sad about that. But <laughs> that is a good one. I got to do that one. But I kind of got to skip, you know, I was at home and then I came on later. So I got to be part of that. But so while you were on the ranch, I saw a summary and maybe I have this wrong, but it said that you went from a size 20 to a size eight while on the ranch. Do you think? I think so. I think I was like a size 12 on the ranch. Okay. And then, that and makes then way more sense. At the finale, I was like a size two, four, you know, wow. and I, I mean, I'm back up to an eight. You know, I'm an, I'm a size eight now. I'd like to be, a, I really would like to be like a four, six, but um, I don't think I'd ever want to be, because I was 121 pounds at the finale. And I felt like that was too skinny for me. Like my bones, like when I put my knees together, my bones would knock and, you know, I just felt like it was too skinny. But um, I wouldn't mind being like a four, six. Did you lose any hair? Actually, I have not been able. Okay, this this is not me. This is not my hair. I got extensions. I've got hair extensions. Oh, They're actually perfect. so. Um, but my hair won't grow. It just won't grow. My my hair won't grow. My eyebrows won't grow. Like they got really thin. What else happened as a result of that? Yeah. So I'm. I and I just had really thin, fine hair for a long time. And I'm finally, I was like, you know what? I'm getting hair extensions. So well, they look great. Well, so let's you. talk about then after the show, were you yeah. able to maintain the weight loss? Did you continue? And I have lots of questions. I have like a hundred mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. Did you continue to work out eight hours a day? Did you continue 800 calories? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I want to skip back. Okay. For the finale of the show, did you get a clonic? I did. Yes. I did everything. Oh, no. I did the master cleanse for three weeks. Three weeks. Wow. No food. Three weeks. And I did a clonic. And even though I hadn't been eating for two weeks, it's amazing that there's still stuff up in there. <laughs> so they're like your body's pulling the energy out of your body. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. So I um, did, the, did that. I, oh, went in the sauna the night before the the way in and this is going to sound crazy and this was not this was not endorsed by biggest loser at all this is me my own idea i went into the sauna for i go in 20 minutes come out for a couple 20 minutes couple for four hours i did that for oh four hours gosh, i lost die i lost probably and i almost passed out that night for, and i just ate ice chips because i didn't want to have any more water in my body and i lost I I think it was like maybe 10 pounds of water weight at the at the last minute, like right before the weigh-in. So I immediately bounced back to 131, like the next day, you know, because it was water weight that last 10 pounds. But I would have even I would have been the highest percentage of weight loss on the whole show if I had lost two more pounds. Oh. So if I'd stayed in that sauna for another hour, <laughs> who knows? But anyway, so yeah, so I did do that. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, but you looked great and you got really close. Yeah. And I got really close. So then after the show, did you maintain the same weight loss or what happened? Yeah. After the show, for a long time, we were doing like publicity stuff around our area. We were, we started doing these autism resources forums for, you know, to help bring awareness to autism because of our son. Um, we got a book deal and wrote three books afterwards. So we did book tours and stuff. So we did a lot of stuff because it was really good because, you know, I told you I needed to win the show to pay that tax debt because I knew and see 2008 ha happened around then when the real estate market, we went from making six figures a year to making low two figures after the crash. And so I needed, I knew I needed that money to rescue my kids, basically. That's another motivation for the whole thing. So I was devastated at the end when I didn't win any money because I I knew those kids needed me to be healthy, but I knew they even more needed to have a roof over their head. Well, we got back and we were trying to string all that stuff together to, to make money because real estate was not 
you know, working out. And um, we ended up, you know, doing a lot of that and, and we're able to like kind of pay the bills. But after a while, I was just like, we need to move to a cheaper house. We need to rent something cheaper and then rent our house for more just to rescue it. Well, unbeknownst to me, um, the mortgage had not been paid for three months and we got forced into foreclosure. So we lost our house. After the show, we lost our house. Our credit went terrible. You know, we lost, I, I just feel like we lost everything and still had that tax debt over us. But I was still trying to work out and, and stay in shape and go to the gym. I was trying to juggle everything, you know, after that. And I just went a little crazy. And I will say that I feel like the fact that I didn't win and what that did to me mentally made me go a little crazy and contributed to the divorce. There were things that were done financially that I didn't know about that I found out about that I was, I always felt like I was like this, trying to take care of an autistic kid, trying to pay the bills, trying to work, you know, and trying to stay in shape. And I just couldn't do it all. And I finally just let every single ball drop and went nuts and just said, I'm done. And Luckily, God brought me back to where I think I'm halfway sane, at least now, <laughs> and my life's pretty stable. And my kids, oh my gosh, they're so amazing. My oldest son lives in Germany. He speaks fluent German. He got his master's degree over there. He's working for a company there. He's been there about seven years now. Um, I go to Europe almost every year to go visit him. <laughs> my middle son, Pearson, he works with me in real estate. He's a musician also. Super great kid. We're best friends. Um, my youngest son, Rhett, who has autism, we thought he would never be able to live on his own. He's living with Pearson independently. Um, he works full time and they actually made him assistant manager at his job. And so he's doing great. And financially, I've, I've got exceedingly abundantly above what I could have thought because God just brought me back and my company is doing amazing. I own a real estate company. Um, in Traveler's Rest, and we were very blessed, and I'm very thankful for all that. So we went through a lot, a lot after the show, but it's all turned around now, and I can be nothing but thankful and grateful. I might have gotten it total wrong, but, you know, I spoke to your ex-husband, Philip, and mm -hmm. he made it seem like the divorce was because you got so beautiful. He was so sweet. And I really commend two people who can not work out and still be kind and compassionate to each other. I oh, no. We are, we are much. friends. We are friends. I'm the, I mean, he has a house listed and I'm his biggest cheerleader. I mean, I think he, you know, he does a great job with his, he flips houses and he does, he's very talented, does a great job. Um, I want our kids to not feel like we hate each other because that would be terrible for them. No, I feel like, I feel like maybe when I got, I got a lot of attention and stuff. And in a way, because of all the financial stuff we were going through and all the pressure and the stress and like, I, I would say that the attention contributed to you know, a lot of the problems, but also those problems have been there before. I just never had the courage to acknowledge them, I guess, but I'm not putting any blame on anybody. We both are at fault and in choices we made what I, you know, I wish it could have worked out, of course, because when you have kids, you want a whole family unit and you want them to all be together. And I have regrets and um, hate that, you know, we couldn't have worked it out, but you know, everything's good now and he's happy and I'm happy. I have a wonderful husband. He's from Australia. He has an Australian accent and I could just sit and listen to him all day. <laughs> and he's a, he's a man. I mean, he is such a, such a good man. I mean, like he, I, I just, I can't even tell you how amazing he is. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, and part of the reason we're talking so much about Philip is because Philip was her partner on the show. It was a family right. show. Right. And yes. so they together wrote the books. They together went through this journey and mm -hmm. and this is life. And that's why we're here is to talk about the different things. Are these right here? Are these your boys? Yes. Thank I you. apologize Let's... it's covering us up, but there they are. <laughs> Rhett's the one on the left that has autism. Um, Pearson's in the middle and Austin's on the right. Austin's the one that lives in Germany and Pearson's the one that works with me. So, so different and fun. And that's everybody that came to our wedding because we had 
a small intimate wedding on our property at the lake. Um, we have like a covered bridge on the property. So we've got married in there. And then the next day we had a big party and invited all our friends and family and stuff. So that's beautiful. I too, I met my husband while on the show and they said, don't do that. And I didn't listen. <laughs> and um, we were not a match made in heaven and we are not cordial. Uh, but similar to you, we just continue to fight the fight. And I feel like I'm abundantly blessed in so many different areas mm -hmm. these days. And so it's, it's not what I pictured, but it's also beautiful. Yeah. Uh, exactly. so, so you leave the show. You guys do this grand book tour. You, um, you're you doing all this promoting and this goes on for a few years. And then what happens? Is there any time that you gained any weight? Have you ever had any struggles since or has it been pretty oh, much yes. pretty oh, steady? Yes. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've never gotten um, back up to like 200 pounds or something. I've always stayed like maybe the highest I've gotten is like 185. No, probably 185. Um, I got back up to that. I'm like 153 now. So, um, you know, but so I've, I've gone up and down like 30, 30, 35 pounds. And then, you know, I'll just try to get on, like I've done low carb, you know, low carb works for me better. It seems like I am kind of insulin resistant or something. I don't know. I feel like that carbs, I don't know. It makes me hungrier. It makes me, I just don't lose weight as fast when I'm, when I eat a lot of carbs. But then um, I saw I'll do that recently. I just right before my wedding because I'd gotten back up because um, you know you get happy and you get lazy and you <laughs> eat too much. But um, I decided to do um, semaglutide, and so I started the shot probably in February, and I got married in May, and I lost thirty pounds of doing the shot. Right, right at 30 pounds. And I took, went off of it because I went to London for my birthday to see Taylor Swift again and um, a bunch of my friends. And I did, and I've been really, you know, you get sick on it. I mean, like you get where you can't eat and you, you feel nauseous and you have heartburn. I mean, there are symptoms and side effects um, to the, the semaglutide. But um, so I went off of it for three weeks because I didn't want to, you know, expectedly eat something and start feeling sick when I'm with a group of people. So um, but then I went back on two weeks ago and, you know, I'm back on track. So, um, but it, that has worked for me and I don't know how it works. I don't, I'm not one of these that does a lot of scientific research, which that just probably shows how not intelligent I am. I just, I, I, it, but my brain, like, I'm just not as hungry. And then also, you know, your your stomach tells you when you're full. Like like normally I would probably eat twice as much as I eat now. You know, so um, you know, I don't know exactly how it works, but it has worked and I'm really it makes you feel just in control. Like you don't have to think so much about food. You know, like before you're so obsessed with it. Like you're just like and so I mean I have a busy job. Like I have a company, I have you know 12 agents that look to me. I have my own houses and things that I'm selling. And so I can't be like, you know, with meal prepping, you know, all the time and bring it, you know, I don't even know when I'm going to get to eat because like I could be out showing houses for 10 hours or something. So my schedule is never consistent. So it just kind of helps that mental noise of having to worry about some really strict plan. I don't know. That's what I found for me. Well, we're going to shock my audience and we're going to talk about this. Okay. So most of my audience is carnivore. And what's very cool about carnivore is it gives some of those same types of things you're talking about because mm -hmm. meat is so filling that mm -hmm. you get that full feeling and then you're full longer. But the minute you add plants and carbs, it messes mm -hmm. with your hunger cues. And then yeah. you find yourself like I could eat a steak and a salad and be hungry in two hours. But if I just eat the steak, I could be full for six hours. Mm -hmm. So it, I feel, I don't know, but I feel like meat kind of has a similar effect, um, but I've been digging into this because of you. Ooh. So I've been finding, and there's some people out there for my audience that hasn't looked into this yet. You can look up Dr. Tina Moore. You can look up Dr. Stephanie Rimka. You can look up Dr. Mark Hyman. I know I'm missing some. Um, there's a bunch of them that have come out. Uh, Dr. Amy Horneman. They've been coming out and saying like, listen, 
this is a peptide. It's not a drug. Mm -hmm. Peptide, mm -hmm. I guess insulin is also a peptide. Mm -hmm. I know I have something called chronic inflammatory response syndrome. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. But at the end of my treatment plan is a peptide called VIP that's going to actually repair my brain. So these mm -hmm. peptides repair us. So the medicine you're on, it doesn't just suppress your appetite. It also repairs you. And I want to say you said before we started that, did you say you also have Hashimoto's or low yeah, thyroid? You have Hashimoto's. Yes. And, and how old are you? I'm 57. 57. Okay. <laughs> so we got the hormones going down. We've mm -hmm. got the Hashimoto's. We've mm -hmm. got maybe a slower, we have some maybe metabolism issues because like you'd said, your hair wasn't growing, your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So this medicine is doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes is what I'm learning. I and feel like it, I have had more mental clarity because I take every day I take supplements. Like I take, you know, turmeric and ginger and CLA and basil and um, wild mushrooms, uh, lion's mane mushrooms. I take supplements just to protect my brain because my grandmother had Alzheimer's and I really, you know, that is a concern. And I've noticed my cognitive ability or just my quickness has improved since I started taking this medicine. Like it, it's so strange. So I had mentioned to you the other day, I wonder how it could affect someone with autism, like my son, you know, if it could help him, you know, and he needs Dr. to lose Tina, Dr. Yeah. Tina is saying that there is evidence to believe that this can help people with autoimmune conditions and autism. Now the data isn't out. Obviously they're not experimenting on a bunch of people, but they believe that it can be repaired. And, you know, so my concern has always been, I had gastric bypass and it didn't mm -hmm. fix my issue that I had these underlying conditions right. where it seems like these peptides might actually be working on some of those underlying conditions. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> My only concern still is that like I have family members who are now still following standard guidelines that don't involve a lot of meat. And so they're not eating a lot of nutrient dense food and I'm worried about their nourishment. Mm -hmm. um, but if people are nourishing themselves and moving and exercising and well, that's um, the thing. It's like, you don't want to eat as much. So I can see why people would be like, oh, I'll just see, you know, a hamburger and a shake or whatever, you know? And so you do have to be mindful of what you are putting in when you are eating. And, you know, protein is the main thing. Also not to lose muscle, you know, because they say you could lose muscle quickly with this. So I've been trying to be mindful of my protein and putting that first before I eat anything else, you know? Have you been lifting heavy things? <laughs> well, we do have a little gym in our basement. So we started trying to work out down in the basement, but that lasted for about a week. And then we were lazy this last week. So the one yeah, day you were off, I just took the whole summer off. I didn't lift one heavy thing except for my kids the whole summer. Like, Well, that's a lot though, you know, <laughs> your kids. Yeah, I, I've heard that you got to lift heavy things and eat your protein. And yeah. if I could pick people's protein, it would be meat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we say every, I mean, like I'll go to Costco and buy the big trays of, of ribeyes and stuff. And we'll eat steak a couple days a week. I mean, I think it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's good for you in my opinion to have, you know, cause it is, it is pure protein and it's, you know. It's I don't want the nutrients in it that are actually available to our body. Or unfortunately, I don't think people realize the nutrients in plants, they're there. They are, but mm -hmm. they're typically in a different form that has to be converted for our body to absorb it. So we're not absorbing all the beautiful nutrients that we are being told that we are. So that's well, why yeah, some people no. who are vegetarian can still be anemic, but eating buckets of spinach. My my business partner, she is, like I said, vegan and she, you know, only plant based. And I don't know. I mean, she looks great and she seems to have plenty of energy, but I just I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'd be eating constantly just to try to get <laughs> all the protein and the nutrients from plants. I don't know. That's just. Yeah, good. it's a lot of carbs. But what. What we have in common is that she's on an elimination diet to feel her best. Yes, and, and I, she's doing what's best for her, and I'm all for it, you know. Yeah. So I love sharing this perspective. I love that you're able to come out and talk about this because most people won't. You know, there's such a stigma of, like, cheating. Now, I like... 
kind of on this Dr. Tina kick, but before, before I interviewed you, I, I did a lot of Dr. Tina sniffing. Uh-huh. Not sniffing, that's not the right word. <laughs> um, and she was just talking about how the effects that our environment and our food have had on our entire population mm-hmm. and how I would love to heal my body with meat. And I'm continuing to work on it, mm-hmm. but I'm concerned for the magnification on our kids. The fact mm. that like our generation might not be feeling that great, but our kids' generation seems to not be feeling great, even worse. And like, what's going to happen to their kids? And their mental health. It's like, there's so many mental health issues that we, you know, we had our own problems, but I just feel like every kid has anxiety. Every kid has depression. And I don't know how much of that is social media or whatever, but I'm, it's I think it's physical. Yeah. It's very I, frustrating. I think the nervous systems are physically um, inflamed and that's what's causing that. This is the craziest thing. When I cut all the plants, I started like the best mental health. I don't feel like I would need to be on an anti-anxiety medicine at all. Wow. Um, But I, I'm with you on, we all need to find the thing that makes us feel our best. And there's evidence that smaller bodies are live longer. And as we struggle with our weight, being overweight causes so many comorbidities. Mm. So I love that you look absolutely fabulous. Oh, you're so sweet. I I feel great. Do you have any tips for people? Well, I have one more question. There's this thing where people think if they just stop eating basically and run marathons like we did on The Biggest Loser, then they will finally be skinny. But Mm. for me, that was horrible for my metabolism and my body. And I'm wondering, do you have, did that work for you? Or do you have any tips for people on how they can continue to work on this? Well, the one thing that I was the, like revelation, it was a revelation to me when I got on the show, because I did that before I got on the show, I would starve myself all the time. I try to starve, you know, do a starvation diet. Oh, I'm bad because I eat, because I eat, you know, I'm a human, I'm bad because I eat. But um, with that whole thing of eating more often, because my lymphatic system was so clogged up when I went on Biggest Loser, I would work out all those hours and I did not sweat when I first went on there. I was for like a week or two, like I didn't sweat. And we were like, what is going on with you? Why are you not sweating? And finally, I don't know what happened, just eating every few hours and trying to be consistent in my, and it maybe it sped up my metabolism with the consistency in eating or what, I don't know. But then I started to sweat. So I feel like, there are more people that are gaining weight from trying to starve. And then later on, they just go back the other way, you know, than just consistently, you know, make like if you're hungry, eat a little something, you know, just always keep fueling your body. I think fueling your body is important. And, you know, my own sister right now, she's trying to lose weight for something and she's trying to eat a can of tuna and some cucumbers. And that's all she eats all day. And I'm like, you can't do that. That's, you know, that's insanity. So I feel like eating smaller meals more often and being mindful of what you're eating is more important than starving yourself and trying to, and I mean, you know, it's good to be active. It's good to, you know, get your steps in. It's good to lift weights and keep your core strong and all that. But like, you don't need to be a maniac about it. You know, nothing good ever yeah. comes of just d- doing things quickly. Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Be consistent and slow and steady. And that wins the race. I definitely think you should tell your, did you say sister or sister-in-law? My sister. You should tell her about sardine fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go my channel and look up sardine fasting. It'll change her life. (laughs) Okay. I'll Um, do it. Wonderful. Well, is there anything else you would like to tell people? No, I mean, I'm just really thankful to have this opportunity to share because there are so many people out there that are, that are just, you're in your head all day struggling about, I'm a failure, I'm bad, I'm because I'm overweight. And honestly, there's there are answers out there, I mean, for everybody. And it may not have anything to do with your willpower. It may not have anything to do with you not being active. It, you know, it's, it's you got to find what's right for you and what works for you. And Quit beating yourself up because goodness gracious, we got enough people beating us up without us beating ourselves up. So just give yourself a break and and get out there and look for things that that will work for you. 
I love that. I totally agree. So, well, thank you so much for coming on and everybody. Thank you, thank you for tuning in today. If you like this content, please like subscribe and share. Bye. Bye.